Hi everybody, so a German architect has invented a new kind of solar cell, but unlike other solar cells which are flat panels, this one is an enormous ball of glass and the claim is the special optical properties, the geometry, allow this to be 57% efficient, which of course is far more than you would expect a normal solar cell to be. So the big glass ball acts like a ball lens, focusing the light onto a small photovoltaic panel. Because the panel's so small, it's relatively easy to move, and so there's a dual-axis tracking system. They're also looking at collecting the thermal energy by combining it with the Stirling engine to create a hybrid device. So what it basically is, is a concentrated photovoltaic system. It's the invention of André Brossel, and it's been developed by a company called Rollerman. The slightly odd claim by the creators is that it can be used to harvest energy from moonlight, albeit at a much reduced efficiency than sunlight. Now it certainly takes a prize for out of the box thinking, but could it really work? So I have these and they're little fence lights that are solar cell driven. So there's a the solar cell there, you hang them on your fence and they light up at night. And it's quite astounding really because they've obviously got a little solar cell, a couple of LEDs, they'll have a circuit in there, they'll have a battery and a little tiny charge controller. And all of that for about a two pounds or so, you buy them in a box of six for a tenner. Anyway, let's take it apart and get the bits out. Okay, so there's the solar cell that I've picked off the front and there's the lithium battery right there and we've got the on off switch and then a little circuit board with a couple of LEDs on it. We'll save that because we don't know if we're going to use that later or not but let's just check that we haven't actually broken this taking it out by connecting it up to a multimeter and covering it over. So if I cover that over I get nothing and then if I expose it to the lights in here Actually, that's pretty good. That's 1.9 volts, even on these lights here. So that's kind of cool. There you go, 1.9 volts. Okay. So courtesy of LED lighting in cars, I have one of these. It's called a bullseye lens. It's hemispherical. And you get them in all headlights these days. And of course, I went down to the scrapyard and pulled this out of a headlight. And the question is, will this actually make a difference to our solar cell? So there's our meter reading our solar cell under ambient light conditions. Now let's add our bullseye. And we do get an increase. It's quite small, but we get an increase. And back down. And back up again. <laughs> so there's no real surprise that that worked. I mean, it's a waveguide, it's a lens. It's collecting the light, bending the light and pointing it in a single direction. So, because when the solar cell is sitting out there, it's receiving the light, but any angled light it can't get. It works best if it's straight on. And what this does, of course, is bend all of that light from around here and here and here. And so it's straight on coming out of there. And it is the subject of a lot of research, developing light guides to put on top of solar cells. And it's also the inspiration behind the Beta EY by Andrea Brossel, which is a great big sphere of glass. It's a beautiful looking thing. But of course, whenever you you stick anything on top of a solar cell, even a piece of optical glass, what it's going to do is absorb some of the light and so the benefit you get from it is relatively modest. I mean it wasn't that bad, we went up from what is it, 1.35 uh, to 1.48 volts, so we got a reasonable increase in the voltage in terms of percentage, but we're still losing quite a lot of the energy just by it being absorbed like that. And of course solar cells can only work in a relatively short range of solar power, that amount of light that they can actually use within the correct wavelength. It'd be really great if we had a material that took the light that it absorbed and re-emitted it, but re-emitted it in a light wavelength that the solar cell can use. And of course, the reason I mention this is because such materials do exist and they're not exotic at all. In fact, 
There's an example of one. This is a piece of acrylic filled with a fluorescent material, and it acts like a light guide. It collects all the light here, bounces it around, absorbs it, and re-emits it in a visible light that we can see along the edge. And that's why the edge of these things are always so much brighter. Now we want to have a look at this as being a waveguide, so what I'm going to do is turn the lights off, and we'll see how that works. Okay, I've turned the overhead lights off so we can see this, and there's the reading on the meter, and here are my fluorescent panels, and let's hold them over the solar cell. <laughs> so here's my meter, here's the solar cell, let's put our fluorescent panels over and see what happens to the meter. Isn't that cool? So the big problem with these kind of systems is that concentrating light also concentrates the heat and using something like fluorescence can help alleviate that. Now the spherical collector is a concentrated photovoltaic and it's going to have the same problems at all concentrated photovoltaics have. It is definitely a very sexy design, but it could be a bit more a style over a substance really in terms of the advantages they're claiming, because it doesn't matter whether it's a great big ball as a lens or a sheet of micro lenses or a sheet of prisms that you put on there or reflective mirrors that you might use. All of the problems are going to be the same. There's going to be one added problem with concentrating it the way, doing, the way they have done with the spherical system is that it's very reliant on the lens and so maintenance is going to be extremely high, basically just cleaning off the bird poop. So though it looks great and it certainly had a splash when it first came out, I think that the design is good but the technical details are perhaps a little sketchy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.